Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the normal monster most, AvrielR32 here, and destroy the ever-living vanilla monster boo-boo stain. Ugh, that sounds nasty, You're getting it on your vanilla off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, feels good to be back in town after having to be in my eye doctor for two and a half hours because we have eye tumors because y'all y'all know about my cancer story and my journey but i did write a book about it link in the description shameless plug half of all profits go towards the vhl alliance if you want to be inspired and read about my cancer journey i really do appreciate all the love and support feels good to be back in town i did not know that this was three weeks old i also didn't know that this came from a fellow florida player uh <laughs> oh my god i'm still laughing at this shout out to solo games uh, i'm gonna have him tagged in the title of this video because i actually just commented on the video and said i'm gonna give you a shout out and uh make this video um i actually saw this first on m 40s channel but the deck profile itself is three weeks old um this florida Yu-Gi-Oh player uh, got ninth place <laughs> with Go Giga Gaga Gigo, Normal Monster, Phantasm, Spiral Dragon, the freaking deck. Oh my god. You know what? That deserves a golf clap, man. Uh, I wish that this guy would have got top eight. I know that Cool Stuff Hollywood specifically is where the regional was held. I know that those regionals are rather smaller. Um, so I know that it makes it very difficult to top, right? Um, but the fact that this dude got ninth is insane. So we're, we're, we're going to go through all this because of course it's the primite cards that make all of this doable. And the guy did comment on solo games, his video talking about what changes he would make. He did say that he would play the Imperial dragon. I don't know Jack about this deck, so I don't know how you would fit Imperial dragon in here. I also don't know if you would play the, uh, primite another barrel um or the uh resounding reaction or whatever it's called um i'm not too familiar with the primite cards but we're going to talk about all that as we go through so uh we're playing he said that this was a troll uh one blue eyes and one go go giga gaga giga gaga gaga uh <laughs> i think that you should just be playing cosmo queen instead because the secret village inside but we'll, we'll talk about that uh one megalo smasher x this is literally his one normal summon and then the one phantasm spiral uh dragon i guess you could also play gene warp werewolf because it's literally the same stats level 4 2000 um but it could be for the attribute i don't know um but yeah phantasm spiral dragon uh you don't actually need it for the phantasm support cards but it's the vanilla support monster uh, we're playing two copies of time tearing morganite um at its core this deck is a protect the castle stud deck so it's it's really good uh we're <laughs> we're also playing two heat wave now you might be thinking avery you can't summon Read the fine print of the fine print on this card. Neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters until your next draw phase. You are the 0.001% of decks in the Yu-Gi-Oh world that don't play effect monsters. Um, yeah, so <laughs> this doesn't affect you at all. Uh, we're playing three copies of extra because you're a stun deck. Um, you need to be drawing cards. Um, I saw a few people in the comment section of Solo Games' video saying, why not just play Prosperity? But with stun decks... Even though you could make the argument that you could also play Prosperity, you don't want that to be conflicting with Extrav. So, like, you don't want to go Extrav, draw into Prosperity, and then crap all over the floor because you already drew cards by a card effect, so you can't use Prosperity. So, maxing out on Extrav, getting that plus two off the top instead of one of six is really good. And if you happen to draw into Duality, then you get one of three, and then you're really not upset, right? Uh, next up here for the Draw Engine, we are also playing one copy of Card of Demise. Um, yeah, it's pretty standard. Uh, one copy of the uh, Succumbing Song Morganite. So this is a new Morganite card out of uh, Rage of the Abyss. So for the rest of the duel, apply the following effects. You cannot activate monster effects in the hand. We don't care. <laughs> monsters you control can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. If your monster battles an opponent's monster, any battle damage it inflicts to your opponent is doubled. That's really good. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Morganite card from your deck to your hand, then place a card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. So this searches you time tiering, which gives you two summons a turn anyway, uh, and also lets you draw two cards instead of your normal one. Yeah, this this is a little broken combo here. Uh, duality, because it's duality. Then we're playing two copies of the Primite Drill Beam, uh, one copy of the Roar, and then three copies of the Lordly Load. Apparently, this card has gone up in price. I haven't checked or anything. Um, but these Primite cards are really good. And seeing this deck now get ninth place at a regional, granted, the, it was a bit of a small regional, but regardless, it, it's, it's the fact that it did well, uh, just fell short of uh, a top eight invite, which is what he needed to get his invite was top eight, but still, he got ninth, so at a bigger regional, you get your invite in that case. 
Um, these Primite cards being able to support crazy off the wall vanilla decks like this, and he even talked about playing Imperial Dragon at some point, really makes me wonder how much better this can get when you apply different uh, vanilla monster ideas. Like, what if you apply this to the blue eye structure deck once we get that in, I believe, February? What if you apply this to, I don't know, a straight Phantasm Spiral deck? Like, what if you took out some of the other cards in this deck? I don't know really what you would take out. Maybe like the Heat Waves or something. Uh, maybe some of the Floodgates. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. And you focused on more of like the Phantasm Spiral equip spells. Would that make the deck overall better? Um, it's really interesting to see something like this do well um, because it is basically a Protect the Castle stun deck. But it's interesting that the Primite cards can be used in such a way that if we get more Primite card support down the line, uh, this deck could very well get even better. Uh, and then one copy of D Fisher, uh, three copies of the Pacifist Phantasm City. So this card's actually busted. So this card's name is always treated as Yumi. Um, you cannot normal or special summon effect monsters the turn you activate either of this card's effects, even if this card leaves the field. We don't care. Once per turn, if you normal or special summon exactly one normal monster and no other cards, add one Phantasm Spiral card from your deck to your hand, so it also searches you the vanilla monster. If your opponent activates a card or effect except during the damage step and you control no tokens, you can special summon a phantasm spiral token worm type water level 8 attack and defense 2000 notice the lack of a hard once per turn on this card so one example that the player gave was that he had this card up the opponent activated something he chained the effect of the city his opponent chained dominus impulse and didn't have a trap engrave so he just chained the effect of the city again getting out a token and his opponent proceeded to, I guess, crap all over the venue floor. <laughs> so, yeah, this not being once per turn is crazy. Um, two Imperms, three of the Spiral Battle. Um, it pops, so does it pop or banish? Target one card your opponent controls. Yeah, destroy it. If Umi's on the field, you can activate this card from your hand. So it's basically a hand trap. Banish this card from your graveyard. Target a normal monster you control. Equip that normal monster with uh, all Phantasm Spiral. Equip spell cards you control that can equip to it. Um, yeah, I don't think that would really come up because you don't have any yeah you don't have any but it's adorable um three dominus impulse and three dominus purge because you're not activating monster effects two primite howl uh two copies of the spiral power it's basically another imperm if all monsters you control are normal monsters minimum one target one effect monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn it loses a thousand attack and offense also it has its effects negated if yumi's on the field you can activate this card from your hand you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target one normal monster you control equip one phantasm spiral equip spell from your hand or graveyard to that normal monster that's pretty good and then of course it's a stun deck you're going to be playing floodgates uh one tikaboo one lose one turn one skill drain and then two copies of the rise of the or fifth of the unrivaled tenny so when a spell trap or monster effect is activated while you control face up non-effect monster negate the activation if this set card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect you can special summon one non-effect monster from your extra deck <laughs> you can summon blue eyes ultimate fucking dragon <laughs> oh my god i he said it never came up but this is just hilarious to me that uh, I don't know if Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is the highest stat vanilla monster. I know that there's Master of Oz, but I'm pretty sure that's 4,200. But this is hilarious to me. Like, even if it's not the highest stat line vanilla, you play Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon just for the cheese. Like, this is hilarious. This wasn't his extra deck. The only thing that was the same was the three Ultimate Dragon, the three Ints, and the Omega. He did play, like, one or two Garua. But... He said the whole extra deck didn't matter because you're just playing everything for extra. Um, so the extra deck, besides the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, the Ultimate Dragon is the only thing that matters in case they pop your Unrivaled Tendi. Um, But everything else can just be whatever you want. It could be Super Poly targets if you decide to play Super Poly. It could be just anything. If you're worried about, I don't know, Dogmatica for some fucking reason, then yeah, you just play plenty of Dogmatica targets for the Maximus stuff. Um, so yeah, just three blue eyes, ultimate dragon, throw in any other 12 cards you want, um, for the side deck. So this, this is interesting. So he, <laughs> he plays Cosmo queen because he's also playing secret village and metaverse because Cosmo queen's a spellcaster. You do have ways with the primite spells to special summon vanillas from hand deck or grave by calling the name. So you literally just go activate, call Cosmo queen, summon it, activate secret village. And then you're just big cheesing. It makes me realize, especially too, with Exodia that, I feel like any deck right now in this format that can crap out a secret village, 
whether it's just as a going first line or like something that they can work into their main deck engine is really good this format like i, I strongly believe secret village is like a sleeper uh, floodgate of the format if you can establish a secret village you're gonna win the ball game especially the more that you look at like the top meta decks like tempai needs their spells runic obviously needs their spells um to a lesser degree snake eye and its variants with azamina especially white force needs spells you know <clears throat> every deck right now needs spell cards so being able to establish a secret village is really damn good a uh, two sphere mode two lava two evenly two different dimension ground two torrential two soldiering and then we already talked about the metaverse um to quickly get into the changes here so i'm just not rambling all day um he did say he wanted to bump up evenly to three i think you can easily do that by taking out the the troll cards with blue eyes and gaga gigo and throwing in cosmo queen into the side putting in a third evenly match he also said in the comments of the video that he took out where is it he took out roar for a third howl um because someone commented and said howl seems to be the better card um i guess i'm not a primite expert but i would say yeah sure take out roar for a third howl he also said he would take out d fisher because he was just never drawing it uh the imperms as well because anytime he saw them he was winning anyway and i think that's everything yeah yep and then you just bump it evenly to three so overall this deck is really interesting i think if you make these four changes here and like if you throw in cosmo queen into the main it just makes the deck overall better um and then you also have the primite imperial dragon to somehow work into this deck um i haven't read what this monster does if this card's normal something you set a primite spell or trap from your deck that seems really good in this deck you can always eat the following effects of barrel once per turn tribute this card send a normal monster from your deck to the graveyard during your standby phase if you have a normal monster on your field or in your graveyard you add this card from your graveyard to your hand this seems interesting but then if you're playing heat wave you can't summon it anyway so it's kind of whatever but I'm definitely going to be messing around with this. Um, I'm hoping that this is something viable I'll be able to play for the YCS in February in Orlando. Because if I can get a feature match playing vanilla monsters, I will just I, I will need a clean pair of shorts at that point. Because that would just be crazy. Um, but this deck is really cool. I mean, especially something off the wall. Like, look at this. Three, four, five. You're setting your Dominus cards. You can even leave them in the hand if you want. Um, you got the Primite Load, which adds you a Primite card. You can special summon a Vanilla Monster from Hand Decker Grave. You've got Card of Demise. You're going to draw cards. That's crazy. Now, obviously, if you go second, are you going to have a hard time? Yeah, because you're going to be relying on Dominus Purge and Impulse to hopefully get you there. Uh, and then you're drawing into another Purge, which I guess isn't terrible. Um, which, God, the more I look at this deck, the more I realize that the Dominus cards are busted af in this deck because you're just not activating any monster effects it's literally your spells and uh, kind of traps for a, to a lesser extent i suppose doing all the work for you this deck is awesome this is really cool i'm definitely going to mess around with this i'm going to put some other um phantasm spiral cards in here and, and see what we can do with this um but if you want a budget deck play this like yeah dominus cards are pretty expensive but there's no flawless and like you could always i guess throw in something else besides the dominus cards uh, and not having to play Fwallows and play, <laughs> play a Cosmo Queen that's like, what, a fucking quarter? Oh, my Lord. Th this is awesome. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know how we can make this even better, more powerful, so we can walk on into Locals with Vanillas. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.